Today I'm working on the hardest part of my Miku X Strawberry cosplay, the blouse. And also the sleeves, and also the socks. Socks are not gonna be that hard, but the sleeves and the blouse are pretty hard. Also, don't forget to subscribe because there will be a wig video coming. It has been as much of a nightmare as I expected, so I've kind of been avoiding it. Speaking of, so I've been avoiding this shirt because it scares me. This kind of thing requires a lot of precision, and precision is not my strong suit. I've also never done a full button placket, and I just proved in the last video that I can't do a clean ruffle to save my life. And this is the center of the costume, so if it looks bad, it's gonna be really obvious. But I'm gonna try my best. I've already done a mock-up just to make sure the pattern fit. It did, so now I have all my pieces cut out. Here's an overview of the pattern. We have the collar, the center fronts, the side fronts, the side backs, and the back. And the closure for it is going to be a functional button placket down the front. So I've already surged all of these, but they are not ready to go yet, because god damn it, they all need attention. First of all, the button placket. Now the setup for a button placket is not hard. So I have already pressed these two pieces into the folds that they need to be in. And I did that just by pressing a half inch fold and then pressing that into a full inch fold. So now all I need to do is top stitch right next to those folds and the setup for the button placket will be done. Now the hard part is actually getting the buttons on there evenly spaced, but I'm not doing that yet because first these pieces need pin tucks. That's what those are. Those are pin tucks. The way you do pin tucks is by marking the fabric where the pin tuck should go, folding it on that mark, pinning it so it stays like that, and then precisely and perfectly so a straight, even line down the edge of that fold. So my pin tucks are at a 16th of an inch, but the smaller they are, the harder they are. So if you're not super confident in being able to get that line really straight, you might find better luck with an eighth of an inch. But once they're all in there, you just press them flat. And we've got these on both of the front panels and down the back. Also, you do need to add width to your pattern to accommodate for the pin tucks. And I actually didn't do the traditional math method. What I did was put the pattern in Illustrator and then chop the pattern piece up in Illustrator and add width for the pin tucks that way. All right, I finished all 12 pin tucks. I feel like I did a pretty good job on the front. I think they look pretty even, but on the back, they're not so great. They're just a little like wobbly, but the front ones look good. So I'll take solace in that. I'm still not able to put the shirt together yet though, because first we have an inset ruffle to do. Inset meaning that it is going to go in between the seam of the center front and the side front. So what I'm going to do is first make the ruffle. I don't know what it is, but I've been struggling with ruffles lately, but I'm starting this one out right because I actually cut the ruffle with the grain. And if you don't know why that's important, go watch the last video because I did a whole graphic on it. Anyway, this one does need some bias tape on it. The roll of bias tape, by the way, is looking a little better. So I've already marked this piece up for its bias tape and all I'm gonna do is take the bias tape, put it on there and sew it down on both sides of that bias tape. Once I get that done though, I'm going to press it back into its fold. I'm gonna surge down the edge and then I'm gonna gather it up by hand and I'm gonna pray that it comes out better than the last one I did. Guess what? I've nailed this ruffle, okay? Listen, can I even say I nailed it yet? It's not even in, right? But it looks a lot better. Like I said, this time I actually cut it on the grain. So the fold looks really nice. The bias tape looks really good. This strip was also only 2.5 times the size that it's going to need to be. Now I just gotta not mess up putting it in this, which is gonna be pretty weird. So like I said, this is getting put in between the center front and the side fronts, but the ruffle actually goes all the way down the back. So it's also going in between the center back and the side backs. So before I baste that in, what I'm going to do is take my center fronts and my center back, and I'm gonna sew them together at the shoulders. That way I can baste the ruffle from the bottom of the center front all the way down to the bottom of the center back, which will mean we don't have a break in the ruffle at the shoulder. So now that these are together, I'm gonna take my ruffle and I'm gonna pin each ruffle to both of these sides and I'm going to baste these on first. And once those are on, I'm gonna get my side front seams and my side back seams, and I'm gonna sew those together at their shoulders too. When those are together, I'm gonna take my center front slash center backs and my side front slash side backs, 
and I'm going to sew them together all the way up both of those seams. Making sure I'm going further in than that basting line. And when that's together, our inset ruffle will be done. But then all we have to do is sew together the side seams, and that means I can try it on. Okay, nobody panic. It does not fit. <laughs> okay, I've got a little bit of like, I believe the technical term is bingo wing happening over here. And then obviously the buttons are not in yet, but I foresee the pin tucks not sitting straight. And the other thing is I would like the ruffle to be more this way. So that indicates to me that the front panels are too small, but nobody panic because I already made new ones. So I'm gonna unpick this apart, which is unfortunate because the ruffle did end up looking pretty good. So I mean, that's great. The ruffle's still gonna look good um, and it'll actually fit me when I redo it. But you know, it sucks to have to do it again, but just gotta roll with the punches. Punches rolled with, this is astronomically better than the first one. The pin tucks are sitting right. The ruffle's sitting exactly where it sits on Miku. It's going right over the shoulder. The bingo wing situation is gone and it's much better. I really, really didn't wanna remake the front panel and have to do all the pin tucks again, but sometimes it's just worth it. And we have finally come to the end of the ruffle redemption arc because I think these just look perfect. Isn't that cute? Okay, now I gotta do the collar and the buttonholes. I should do the buttonholes first. So I have already marked on the button placket where the buttons need to go. And no, I did not bother to know which side is the girl side because that's fucking stupid. I put it on the side that came out prettier because remember the buttonhole side is the one on the top. That does matter. Anyway, buttonholes are gonna be different for every machine. Uh, both of my machines actually have several one-step buttonholes, but not every machine is gonna have a one-step buttonhole. You will know if it does, if it comes with a contraption like this. The, let me, where's my other one? That's not so weird. Yours is probably gonna look more like this. The FAF one actually has you plug it into the machine, which I've literally never seen before, but all I have to do is put this on the machine and hit a button and then make it go. Literally that simple. If you don't have a machine that does one step buttonholes, some machines have uh, a several step buttonholes where you kind of make it go burp and then ee ee and then burp. If you have no buttonhole stitches on your machine. A couple videos ago, I actually did buttonholes with just a zigzag stitch. So even if that's all you have, you can still make buttonholes. But I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six buttonholes on the front of this shirt and then I can put the buttons on it and we'll have functioning buttons. For the actual buttons, I decided to do cover buttons. Cover buttons are buttons that you cover in fabric. I don't know if that warranted explanation. Anyway, cover buttons are really cool because they mean you can match your buttons to whatever fabric you've been using. So these are just the red poly cotton that I've been using on other places of the costume, but they're really, really easy to make. You basically just get a little kit like this and it comes with these pieces and you like basically smash the fabric around the button and then it stays there. Anyway, I'm just gonna sew all the buttons on by hand and then we will have a blouse with functioning buttons and all that'll be left is the collar. So we have ourselves a nice wide Peter Pan collar. And if you can't tell from the last couple cosplays I've done, I love me a good collar. But of course, both of these pieces need attention and you can see I have already paid attention to one of them. So collar is two pieces. Obviously there's the top side and a bottom side. And the top side I have gone ahead and I basted this bias tape on there uh, into what will become, would you call that a sailor stripe? I don't know. So basically what I did was I went through by hand with just really wide stitches. I got that into the place it's gonna need to be so that now I can very easily take this to the machine and sew down either side of the bias tape and then take out the basting stitches and we will have a lovely sailor stripe. Miku stripe. I don't know. The underside, however, needs a different kind of attention. So it needs some fusible interfacing. Now I have talked about interfacing a lot on this channel, but at no point have I ever over explained it. So basically, 
Interfacing is a material used to add stiffness to your fabric. It comes in a range of weights. There's really heavy duty interfacing like I used for Ronnie's hat. Then there's mid-weight stuff like the Pelion 808 Craft Fuse, which makes beautiful bows. And then there's really thin stuff, like the kind you would want for a collar or a cuff. You want that little bit of extra stability in a collar because it really helps everything stay flat. On top of coming in lots of different weights, interfacing can also come in a fusible form and a sew-in form. Fusible meaning that one or two sides will be covered in a heat activated glue. So you use your iron to fuse it to the fabric. While sew-in interfacing, doesn't have glue, and you just kind of use it as another layer of fabric, basting it into the piece before you sew the piece into the garment. A random weird thing, I have seen more than one person refer to it as interface, and that's not what it's called. The word is interfacing, inter for in between, and facing referring to its most common use case, a facing. A facing is a small piece of lining at the edge of a garment. So that bottom side of the collar I'm making, that's the facing. And the inner facing is the thing that gets attached to the facing. As cosplayers, we have a lot more use cases for interfacing, defying gravity, creating weird shapes, but sometimes just making a collar. But with both of them prepped, I'm gonna put them right sides together and then I'm gonna sew around the edges, excluding the necky part. I'm gonna turn that right side out, I'm gonna press that and then I'm gonna go watch my own Ronnie video so that I can remember how to do a collar like this. Okay, so I'm gonna put the collar, I think it, it goes right side to wrong side, and then I take the bias tape and I do that, and then I flip that under. Okay, I think I know what I'm supposed to do. It's gonna be annoying with this ruffle on here. Okay, that's pinned on. So I think I'm gonna baste this on first and then do the bias tape. She's basted. So now we're gonna do the bias tape thing. So the way this works is you unfold your bias tape and you're gonna put it on top of your collar. I'm gonna pin it all the way across this top. So now all I gotta do is I'm gonna sew a straight stitch pretty close to this crease on the bias tape which will seal the bias tape to the top of this. And then I just have to flip and fold it over to the inside of the shirt. And then I'm gonna secure that with hand stitching cause it's gonna come out better if I do it that way. Uh, but then the collar will be done. Okay, I have not actually sewn down the inside of the collar yet, but oh, it's so cute. Look at it, oh. <laughs> I'm just, I can't even contain myself. The collar, oh, this is my favorite collar I've ever made ever. And the buttons, it, you know what it looks? It looks so clown and I love that. I don't even have any words, I love it. It's so, I wanna say it's camp, you know? The Ruffle Redemption arc, my very first button placket and the pin tucks look, oh. I just can't get over this collar. I love a Peter Pan collar and this one is just, oh, it's so much. Oh, and it's not even done yet because we got to do the necktie. And you know what I love more than a Peter Pan collar? A Peter Pan collar with a necktie. It's no big surprises here. I'm doing these as loop bows. So I just got two pieces of cotton for the lining and two pieces of micro suede for the outside. And you just put them right sides together and then you sew down the curved sides. And that's the same for the tails, except you go all the way around the bottom. And then you just clip all your corners, you turn them right side out, you press them flat, and then you fold your two little loops and then you sew those together and then also sew together your little tails. Oh, also I did the little thing where I put the horsehair braid in the band. This is still sick. I still highly recommend it. Uh, and then you just hand sew all those together and you have a loop bow. What is it the kids say? Screaming, crying, throwing up. I'm so happy. This turned out so much better than I ever expected it to. I love this little bow. Um, there is a little treble clef that goes right here. Have not finished that yet. I'm actually doing that in gold work embroidery. <laughs> I've been working on that since like July. Oops, but I'll finish that eventually. And then there's two like little tie pins that go here. But for now, we get to move on to sleeves. 
So moving on to the sleeves, I have overcomplicated the hell out of this. These are unattached puff sleeves. Of course it's an unattached sleeve because it's Miku, but they're a puff sleeve with a grid pattern on them. They also have a cuff with a ruffle on it, and then the cuff has buttons, and I am going to do functional buttons for this, but I can't start that yet because like I said, I'm overcomplicating the hell out of this because I decided to interpret that gold grid as pin tucks. There's pin tucks on the blouse. I thought the cohesion would look nice, but that doesn't mean now I need to do a bunch of crisscross pin tucks, uh, which obviously work exactly the same way as the other pin tucks do, except this time I'm doing much larger ones. Unfortunately for me, I also decided to overcomplicate the gold because I'm going to do the gold in gold bugle beads and pearls. And that's gonna take forever, so I will see you in a couple days for these cuffs. Also, I just wanna say, just cause I'm doing pin tucks, doesn't mean that that's the only way you can do it. You could really interpret that pattern as anything you wanted, but uh, also something stupid I did was I used heat erase pen to make my marks, which was dumb because it meant that I couldn't press the pin tucks after one side was done. And for crisscross pin tucks like this, it's gonna be much easier and come out a lot nicer if you do one direction of pin tucks first, press all of those flat, and then go back for the other one. But because I have the heat erase pen, I couldn't do that. So I just made sure everything was pinned really well and really flat before I did the other direction. And once I had them all in there, I gave them a good press. And the pressing is honestly the best part because you just get to see all your hard work come to life and be flat. Anyway, then I got to beading. Uh, beading in straight lines is actually really easy. If you watched the strawberry dress video, you already know that when you bead in straight lines, you go out of the fabric, into several beads, back into the fabric, back up through the middle, and then through the beads again, so that the thread is going straight, to which you then put more beads on. But buccal beads especially, you really only want to go two at a time, especially since this is a curved surface being a sleeve. So these are up through two of them, back down, through the fabric in between them, and then out again, and then you do it over and over again for 12 hours. Uh, and for the pearls, I did them like individually before going through all four of them together to keep them in that little clover shape. But that's the beading. Okay, so I finally finished my beading. I didn't originally plan to do the lattice in beading, but oh boy, am I happy I did. This is just gorgeous. Uh, you can see I have already taken the bottom of this and I gathered it up already. So now we're ready to assemble the rest of the sleeve. So this is what I have. So this isn't even everything that's going into the sleeve, but this is what I need to do the cuff. So this is the band that's gonna go around the top and actually be covered with a ruffle. So we're not gonna pay too much attention to that. We have the actual sleeve, which I'm very proud of, the cuff itself, and then the ruffle for the cuff. So, <laughs> I don't know why I decided to do this as a circle, but I did. Uh, doing it as a circle essentially just makes it harder, but I, that's what I'm going with. To start this cuff, I need to take my actual cuff pieces and I'm gonna take one of them and I'm going to press the edges of it down a half inch on both sides of it. You'll see why I did that later, but all you need to know for now is that the one I'm gonna press is gonna be the one that's inside of the cuff. Once I have this one pressed, I'm gonna sew it together on the short sides, and then we're gonna add our ruffle. So I have two circle pieces cut out here, put right sides together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew around the edges of this, turn it right side out, press it flat, and then we'll be ready to attach it to the cuff. To do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the inside piece of the cuff, I'm gonna hold it out of the way, and I'm gonna sew our ruffle cuff onto the outside cuff, right sides together. Uh, you might also notice I cut tiny little notches into the circle, and that's because it helps the circle ease itself onto that flat edge. So once that's together, I can take my inside piece that's already folded over. I can take that folded edge and hand sew that onto the ruffle, securing the raw edges of the ruffle inside the cuff. And then I got to do buttonholes again, which I already explained. So 
Now there's two buttonholes. Then I just gotta take the outside of the cuff, sew it right sides together with the bottom of my sleeve, and then do the same thing with the underside of the sleeve, hand sewing that in to the backside. Now for the top of the sleeve, things are gonna start getting a little weird, so I have some more stuff to explain. So I've done detached sleeves a couple ways before. I've done buckling systems, elastic straps, I've just taped it to my arm before, but this time I decided to go big brain and do the thing we're doing to the socks the sleeves and use power mesh. So just so you can see, I have the right sleeve. And what I've done is I have cut the sleeve head out of power mesh, just using a fitted sleeve pattern. But for the left sleeve, on that sleeve head, the other thing the power mesh is gonna allow me to do is put Miku's iconic zero one so that I never have to glue it to my body. I also never have to paint it to myself. And I did this in beading. And the way I did this was I just sewed a felt backing to the bottom of the power mesh sewed more felt onto the top of the power mesh, and then I just beaded it. And I'm actually really happy with how this came out. I think it is so cute and so much better than having to paint myself every time I wear this cosplay, especially since it's white. Anyway, so now what's gonna happen is you can see on the left sleeve here, the band is already attached. So what I'm gonna do is sew the power mesh right sides together with that band. And I am gonna use a stretch stitch with that too. Even though we're doing a stretch fabric onto a non-stretch fabric, we're still gonna need a stretch stitch. Before I can sew up the sides of the sleeves, I do still need to make the bicep ruffles. I haven't done that yet. But once I do have that on, I can fold it right sides together, sew up the length of the sleeve, stopping of course at the cuff. We don't wanna ruin all the work we put into making the cuff functional. And after that, the sleeve itself will be done. And then all I'm gonna do is take the top of the sleeve and I'm actually gonna hand sew it in to the bias tape that's on the inside of the armhole. So after I got the beads on the sleeves, I really started to realize these were going to need sleeve supports because the beads made them really heavy. So to reach their full potential, sleeve supports it is. Now sleeve supports are like a historical fashion thing and this is obviously not historical at all. I'm making them out of spandex. I don't even know if this is how you make historical ones, but this is how I'm doing it. Anyway, I have one rectangle that fits around my arm and I have a much longer rectangle that's gonna form the poofy part. So I just gathered down the longer one on both of the long sides and then sewed the ruffled one onto the flat one. And then I just stuffed that with polyfill and sewed down the side seams and it made some water wings. Uh, and then I had to struggle bust to get them into the sleeves, but I got them in there. I might take some of the poof out because woo, it kind of looks like a ham hock or something, but that's the sleeve support. They definitely needed it. Socks. I don't think I need to over explain this too much because I talked a lot about it in the Kokomi video and that video has the most views on my channel that has nothing to do with Peridot. So I think, you know, we're not making socks. We're gonna play sock god again and make them tights. But one thing I did not talk about in the Kokomi video was how I actually got this pattern for my legs. And it's actually one of the easier patterns that you can draft yourself. So here's how it works. The horizontal measurements you need are your ankle, your knee, the tippy top of your thigh, and your waist. And you may also want some extra measurements like the widest part of your calf. And these are the vertical. Your rise, which is your belly button to, am I allowed to say that on YouTube? You know what I mean and your inseam, which is your crotch to your foot. But I also like to measure crotch to knee and knee to foot. Uh, you also need your foot because these are socks. But get those measurements and then get yourself some paper and make yourself a grid like this. And then you kind of just draw a curve at the butt and the crotch and bam, that's it. <laughs> if you have a French curve, you can get a really precise curve. That's like actually how it's supposed to look. But honestly, you can kind of just curve it and it it's stretched, so it's probably gonna work. Uh, but that's it. This will not work for non-stretch pants. Please don't try to do this with non-stretch pants. You will be miserable and they won't fit. But, uh, you know, for stretch, this is all we need. Anyway, I take my pattern and I cut it at the midpoint of my thigh, but I'm taking that top part and I'm gonna cut it out of power mesh. I take the lower side and I'm cutting that out of a matte spandex milliskin. And then I take my pieces and with a ballpoint needle in my machine, and my machine set to, I'm using a stretch stitch, but not every machine has a stretch stitch. You're probably gonna want a zigzag stitch or a lightning stitch. Anyway, I'm gonna sew them together, right sides together. So now we have one leg with the leggy and the sock. But before I do the other leg, I've got 
thigh ruffles to make. So I actually had to make four of these because there's thigh ruffles and then there's also bicep ruffles. But of course they're not just any ruffles, they have ribbon running through them. So the way I decided to get the ribbon in there was by doing buttonholes. Lots and lots of buttonholes. Uh, it took forever and it would have been entirely unnecessary had I actually picked cotton for this project because you can just get ribbon through fabric if you use like an embroidery needle, but satin's got too tight of a weave, so it came back to haunt me again. Uh, but yeah, I put like 60 buttonholes into four long tubes of fabric that I just tubed up and then pressed flat, and then I just gathered them on the top and the bottom of the buttonholes, and now we have four pretty little ruffles with ribbon in them. So, I also actually went ahead and sewed the thigh ruffles onto the thighs, and I just did that by hand. So now we can finally put the tights together. Now this is really easy, but I'm gonna over explain the shit out of it. So basically, I'm gonna take these two panels and I'm gonna put them right sides together, but you'll notice I'm only really lining up these tops here because we're not touching the legs yet. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin together my two crotch seams, or I guess the crotch seam and the butt seam. Anyway, and I'm gonna sew those together and I'm gonna stop. Don't sew the legs together at this point because if you do that, you're just gonna end up with the tube and not a pair of tights. So I'm gonna do that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna unfold it and you can kind of start to see how this is gonna become tights. And I'm gonna line up my crotch seams so I know that's straight. I'm also going to line up my thigh ruffles so those end up straight. And then I'm going to pin her from toe to toe. And I'm gonna sew one more stitch all the way up one leg, around the crotch, and all the way down the other leg. And then we just gotta turn them right side out and we've got socks that'll never fall down. Oh, by the way, I am aware that I am missing the ruffle that goes on the bottom of the corset. I will do that eventually. There's a couple little tiny details I have not done yet. Like there's a bow that goes here that I haven't done yet. I'll get to it, I swear. This is just, uh, there's so many little details on this cosplay. There, it's just taking forever to get all of them. I really like the blouse. I really like the sleeves. I absolutely can't get over the zero one. I think it is probably the best part of the costume. Uh, but yeah, I hope this proves to some people that even if you're a messy sewist like me, you can still do stuff that requires precision. If you just take your time and you measure everything and you're willing to remake stuff, it can come out nice and clean. And like, not to be sappy, but I think a lot of people could probably relate to this. Like when I look at cosplays I've made, it takes me back to what my life was like when I was making that cosplay. And this cosplay is always gonna be pretty bittersweet because I had only just started making it when my grandma passed away. So this will always be the first cosplay I ever made with the help of her machine. And it, it kind of feels like she like made it with me, you know? And she loved music, so she she really would have loved this one. But she she would have been so judgmental about there not being measures on the skirt. Uh but yeah. Hug your hug your grandmas, everybody. Anyway, the wig video will come out eventually. It has honestly just been a nightmare. I did have a big breakthrough on it this weekend. I've finally gotten it to the point where the support structure actually works. My big problem has been the weight. Uh, I'll show you a little preview. Um, you can see I've gone pretty big with it. Uh, so this isn't just a regular pigtail wig. This is something I really had to figure out, but it's coming and there's lots of mistakes. So subscribe for the wig video. And despite starting it before I started anything else, it's October now and I started this in what, June? July? I started in July, jeez. But I have plenty of time to figure everything out because I'm not actually gonna wear this cosplay until Holiday Matsuri in December. And for the first time in three years, I have decided to compete. It was a goal of mine to compete again this year 
And it took me all year to get there, but we're gonna go, we're gonna do it. I just gotta figure out the wig soon. <laughs> if you're working on a cosplay right now, or you got something done while this is playing, please let me know in the comments. It helps the channel out a whole lot, like a whole lot, if you break a needle on that like button for me. If you have any questions, or you just want a soft and comfy community to come to, please come join our Discord. And a big thank you to my big support tier patrons. I'm gonna go over here, because I always put it on the side of the screen, but I never move. Had to write them down. Pin, Snip, Claire, Zen, Emily, Cam, and Reiko. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon. But now YouTube has a newfangled thing called a super thanks. So if you want a one-time sense of love, it's right there, right below the video. But if you're just liking, commenting, watching, or subscribing, you're supporting the channel too. So thank you. Bye. Ooh.